decorations Start lining cats with sensation I'm so sure Motivation and inspiration For your eternal destination For the Larry Larry W. Robinson Show. Show. Celebrated media personality Larry W. Robinson presents Gospel Updates. Gospel Updates is the who, what, when, why, and where in the gospel music industry. Gospel Updates is a monthly magazine, weekly newsletter, video webcast, as well as a podcast. Gospel Updates has over 25 years of featuring people in the gospel music community. Gospel Updates magazine and the new Gospel Updates weekly newsletter document those who are continuing to help shape and write new chapters of this ever-evolving story of gospel. Go to www.gospelupdates.com. That's www.gospelupdates.com to get the latest issues. If you want to be featured, call or text 337-214-4046 or email gospelupdates at gmail.com for rates and details. Gospel Updates, featuring people in the gospel community for over 25 years. You're listening to The Larry W. Robinson Show. Listen, I am excited about today's conversation. I'm talking with Michelle Pettis. She has a book titled Leaving Large, Leaving Large. And and we'll tell you more about it as the conversation progresses. But Michelle, I slept 100 miles a minute to be able to talk to you today. (laughs) Thank you so very much for joining me on the broadcast. I'm delighted to be here, excited to be here for sure. Thank you. Thank you. So your book is titled Leaving Lars. But before we really dive into the book, you know, you talk about the fact that it's stories of a food addict. Now, let me just let me just throw my business out there. Okay, (laughs) I have a love hate relationship with food. Mm -hmm. So probably about uh, mm, three or four months ago, I said, you know what? I'm tired of being sick and tired, and I need to get some of this weight off. Now, um, let me make a confession. I grew up really, 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 really skinny. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. it wasn't until I got into my 30s that I really started gaining weight. Right. uh, right. Getting thick, you know, is what they call it. Right. And I was like, this looks good. This feels good. (laughs) Right. Thick with a little bit further than thick. But right. so um, I lost 20 pounds, about 22 pounds in the last four months. So I feel better. I sleep better. All of that. So, you know, I, you know, I couldn't wait to talk to you today to <laughs> of uh, losing weight. So let's go there. The book is titled Leaving Large. Just tell us a little bit about your story. OK, so my story is um, really at 60, right? At 60, I decided to take finally take charge of my health. Mm-hmm. And when I, I, and that 60 number is really pivotal is, it, and it's really key because 40 years I battled with my weight. Over 40 years, I have gained and lost 700 pounds. 40 years gained and lost 700 pounds because oh, I, well, I, let's I, make that clear. So you were never 700 pounds. You just lost, gained and lost that amount of lost weight. Lost gain. Yeah. I was just on this, this vicious yo-yo, this vicious cycle Yes. Of losing, losing 40, gaining 50, losing 50, gaining 60. And I know I'm not alone in that. So many people have that, have that issue. And um, it, it is stressful. I mean, I felt stressed about that, about not being able to uh, control my weight. You know, I felt defeated. You know, I felt like a failure, even though I was doing, you know, here's, here's the, the kind of like the the thing that I bump up against all the time in my training and in my, in my teaching is that you have women that were like I used to be that perform at high levels in their job, mm-hmm. right? Perform at high levels in their career, show up and is successful, right? And just able to break all sorts of barriers, win all sorts of accolades in every area of their life. But in this, when this weight thing comes, it's a, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a battle that, they struggle with that I struggled with for so long. And um, so that's really why I wrote the book because 
I figured out something that worked for me. And I feel like it'll work for so many people that tried everything like I did and always gained the weight back and always felt like I was fighting. So in the, in the book, you talk a little bit about the mindset of uh, losing weight. How can we, I guess, change our relationship with food? Because we got to eat. Oh, but, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, I am so glad that you said relationship with food mm -hmm. because relationship with food is a phrase that I intentionally do not use. Okay. And the reason that I say that is this, and it's all from my, everything about what I teach and what I preach and what I say is from my own experience. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, I'm a, I'm a microcosm of a macro world. Uh, but here's the thing is that I spent 40 years, Larry, eating for reasons that had nothing to do with hunger. And so many of us do that. And when I was in this uh, really vulnerable state of really trying to figure out what was going on, mm -hmm. I actually went to the dictionary and looked up the definition of food. Looked up the definition of food. And what it said very clearly is that the purpose of food is for nutrition, nutrition, nourishment, and energy. That is the only thing. Wow. Nutrition, and, nourishment, and, and energy. energy. Yeah, promote cell growth, health, all that. That is the only purpose of food. And I just got like in that moment, in reading that definition, I got clear just like that. Nutri Let me just say that because that thing resonated with me. Nutrition, nourishment, and energy. Yep. So you can tell me this food ain't for comfort. <laughs> I, I and, and see, and that and that's what and that's what I'm going to take take go back to what you said about relationship with food, mm -hmm. is that if we get clear that the only problem that food will solve is hunger, right? That's, mm -hmm. it, won't, it won't solve any other problem. If you are sleepy, if you are sleepy, food will not help you. If you are tired, food will not help you. If you are sad, food will not solve that problem. If you're angry, if you're frustrated, if you're mad, if you are any of those things, Right? So we're in this place where we give food a superpower. We treat it like it's something other than nutrition, nourishment, and energy. We try to have a relationship with it because we go to it for sadness, loneliness, boredom, all that, all those things that it can never do. And that's where the addiction comes in because we keep trying to make food do something that it cannot do. We can't have a, we don't have a, we don't have a relationship with a tree. We don't have a relationship with a car. Mm. Food is an, in, is an inanimate object. We have relationships with people. And as soon as we put food in its proper perspective and use it for, for nutrition, nourishment, and energy, then it allows us to open up our relationship with ourselves and our relationship with other people because we're not looking for food to do the thing that it cannot do. So um, let's stay there just for a second because if, it's, if food is for... Uh, nourishment, nutrition, and energy, then sometimes we have food at the wrong time because, you know, we use food for celebrations. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 that, and, that, and that is what my book is about. My book is about how we got to the place of using food for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and please, I mean, don't think I'm not saying that food cannot be a part of a celebration or that we shouldn't enjoy food. We just need, we just need to be clear while, while we are eating, right? Um, and here was the, the thing that happened, the light bulb that went off for me as I was trying to figure out what was going on, right? Mm -hmm. and, why, and why it is stories of a food addict. The very, the very first story in the book is this. And I told you earlier that I'm from Texas. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a small town in Texas, Marshall, Texas. Shout out Marshall, Texas. Oh, wow. <laughs> East Texas. And um, this was like in the 90s. And we were on my uncle's farm. We were having a barbecue cookout or something. And we had watermelon, right? And I was like, hey, Billy, you want some watermelon? And my uncle, Larry, who was probably 75 or 80 years old, said, no, I don't eat watermelon. Yeah, that, that's the face I made. I'm like, what do you mean? You don't, you don't, yeah. we, we don't, you don't eat watermelon? Everybody eats watermelon. Sure, yeah, why? Right? And he's like, I just don't eat it. And I'm like, you just can't tell me you don't eat what we're black people in watermelon. You gotta eat watermelon, right? <laughs> you gotta eat watermelon. And so he finally broke down, Larry, and told me 
that when he was a kid, you know, five, six, seven, eight, somewhere around, and this is the 30s, right? Thir 30s in rural Marshall, Texas. Mm -hmm. When he was a kid, he and somebody stole a watermelon from a neighbor's garden. And um, my grandfather, his father, found out about it. Two things about my grandfather. My grandfather was a church trustee, mm -hmm. and my grandfather was a railroad worker, laborer. So the one person that a kid that just stole a watermelon doesn't want to meet, the one person they don't want to meet is, your grandfather. is that guy, right. is that guy. And so my grandfather found out about it and just and beat my uncle. Mm -hmm. and, and he he literally beat the taste out of his mouth because from the time that that incident happened when he was a little boy, he never ate watermelon again. So it, at 75 years old, when I'm saying, Billy, he wants a watermelon, he's like, no, I don't eat it. He didn't even say, I don't want it. He didn't say, I don't like it. He said, I don't eat it. And the reason he did not eat it was because the feelings attached to that food were so painful that he didn't want to relive it. And that's, and that is the key to our food addiction that most people don't get is that the foods that we keep eating over and over again, the foods that, that, that sent us to the buffet five and six times, every, everything we eat is based on what we believe about a certain food. We, are, we want to get the feeling that's associated with the food. Just like my uncle didn't eat watermelon because he didn't want that feeling. When we and I got it, I got it like when I would crave certain things or want certain things, it's because what that food represented. I wanted the feeling of what the food represented because of the emotional place that I was in. That was trying to look for food to be what you said, you know, it would look look forward to uh, have a relationship with it. And here's and here's how you know if you're there. So we said earlier that the purpose of food eating is to satisfy hunger, nutrition nourishment, energy. So if you have a craving for something, let's say it's ice cream, mm -hmm. anything, popcorn, I don't, that's something. Mm -hmm. Eat something nourishing. Eat, eat a piece of fish, eat a vegetable, eat some broccoli, eat an apple, get full. Get full so you logically know that you aren't hungry. And if you are still craving that thing, that food, you, if you are still craving the ice cream, you still have a taste for some, whatever the thing is, you know that that food represents an emotional space that needs some healing. Because at this point, you know logically that you're not hungry because you just ate, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you, know logically that, you know logically that you're not hungry. So once we get clear, once we get clear, I'm sorry, my, this is a, a, an alert going on or something. Um, once we get clear, that the purpose of food is nourishment, nourishment, nutrition, and energy, then, then we, could, we could start changing our habits. When we, start craving the, when we start craving the sweets, we start craving the sugars, we start craving going to the buffet an extra time, right? Because now, all the people always say, um, you know, I eat for comfort. You know, I hear that, I hear that over and over, but it's not, it's not always that. That's just... That's just what people. That's just what people say, right? So when you when you go to when you go to an all you can eat buffet and you go there, you go three and four times. It's because you don't you want to feel like you're getting your money's worth. It it, it, it doesn't have any, no nobody nobody is hungry for for five plates of food. That's the truth. You just, you just don't want you just don't want the restaurant to jip you. You're so right. Right. I'm the, I'm, I want to make sure I get my money's worth. Right? <laughs> So, so it's it's nothing of it's nothing about that experience that is nutrition, nourishing, or energy. And we and we and you know there we know it on an instinctive level because think about it. You pray before you food. What do you what do you say when you before when the when the plate comes and you and you bless the table? What is what is the prayer? Well, most people say God is great, God is good. Let us thank Him for our food type prayer. And and a lot of people say. Thank you, thank you, God, for this food, for the nourishment of our body. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bless the hands, the prepared and all that. Mm -hmm. But the in the prayer is thank you for this, for this food, for the nourishment of our body. I said it many times. But then I would go to a Mexican restaurant and eat five baskets of chips. Because <laughs> the chips were free, right? Right? Free food. Who's passing up free food? 
If so, if I had if I had to if I had to pay two dollars every time I ate a basket every time I ate a basket of chips, I get full real quick. So this again, yeah. So so this is this again is about it's not it's not about nourishment and nutrition. It's about getting my money's worth. Ooh ooh. What do you what set you have on your plate? That sure looks good, right? right? Can I get a right? little piece? You right? Yeah. That you know what that is? That's that's not comfort. That's jealousy. You got something better than I got. That's some jealous eating. So we we got we got we got all all this stuff that we're dealing with with jealous jealous eating. What's what's that? Yours looks better than mine. I should have got I should have gotten that right. Wow. But and so, and you and you think about it. Um, you, let's say you know I don't know if you're married, if you're single, if you're dating or or anything like that. You you want to go out on a date. You want to you want to take you want to take somebody someplace really nice because you want to impress them. Now, now food is about status. Oh, oh, they took me. So it's a, oh, what did y'all, we had steak last night. Oh, y'all had steak, right? Say, oh, what, so what did you have last night? I had beans and rice because I'm not a meat eater. And then if you, and if you come from some place of lack, you're not going to be a meat eater because you grew up not having meat because meat was a sense, was a, was a symbol of status. And if you're eating beans and rice right now, that takes you to back to this, this place of poverty and lack that you don't want to experience. So you come home at night, you're tired. You're tired and sleepy, right? You're tired and sleepy, but you get something to eat before you go to bed because you don't want to go to bed hungry because you grew up thinking, I can't go to bed hungry because that represents something. Doesn't matter that you're not hungry, but I'm, I'm not going to go to bed that way, right? So we have all these stories that are working in the back of our head that we don't even know exist because and, and it makes it hard for us to stick to a diet program to eat healthy because you have you have these untapped, unrecognized stories that drive our behavior. So we have to get to these, we have to get to what we really believe about food. And once we change what we believe about a food, then we can change our mind, we can change our body, we can change how we move in the world, we can change our lives, but we have to stop trying to. Just change the food, change the menu, count the calories. You know, how much of this can I have? We have to change what we believe a food means. So what what are some small ways? Because, you know, we can't, I don't believe we can just do it all of a sudden. I mean, no, no. So what are some small ways that we can make these changes in our lives so that we can see lasting change? Okay. So you you hit the nail on the head. This is about lasting change. And the way that you get to lasting change, and I'm talking about fundamentally, fun, changing our beliefs fundamentally. Mm -hmm. Because when we change our beliefs fundamentally, we don't go back to the way that we were, right? Mm -hmm. so it's like, it's like I'm going to tell you the change, but I'm going to tell you this little quick story. It's like a baby, right? I don't have children, but I've seen plenty of babies. I've seen, a, I've seen a plenty of them trying to walk. And when they're crawling, watch them, watch them. They all they're look, doing is they're looking around and they're watching the walking people, and they see the walking people that have freedom, they have mobility, they're doing whatever they want to do. They don't have the words, they don't know what what to call it. They just know that the walking people are doing something that they, that they can't do because they're crawling. And so they're up and they and you see them. They start. They want to stand up. They want to walk. And when they first start, they fall. They fall right around the butt, right? Mm -hmm. And they and they and they'll cry. They'll cry. They'll cry for a little bit. They'll cry for a little bit. But Larry they inevitably get back up mm -hmm. because they are committed to learning how to walk. Walking, not walking is not an option for them. And then when they get back up again and they fall again, watch them. They might even laugh. They're like, oh, I fell again. And then they get right back up. It, the, the falling becomes part of the process for them. And so people, as we're looking to make changes in our behavior and what believe, we believe about food, we have to start like babies and think about change like that. We have to know that what, what we're moving toward mm -hmm. in terms of changing our beliefs about food and our, and our eating habits, our bodies, is better than where we are. So we, the first thing we have to do is stay focused on the fact that change is the thing that we want. Change is the most important thing. That change is the thing that we see. And, we're, and once we start walking, just like babies, they don't go back to crawling. So people ask me now. You're not worried about getting. You're not worried about getting the weight back like I did for 40 years. I am not worried one bit because I have fundamentally changed what I believe about food. I can't. 
I can't eat for sadness anymore because I know the difference between a sadness pain and a hunger pain. A lot of times when this, this thing shows up in our stomach, we think it's hunger, but it's not. And so we just eat because we, there's a difference between being hungry and wanting to eat. And so you, at, I'm getting to what your question was, what can we do? We can be mindful. And here's how we are mindful. I, I have three questions. Okay. I, call, I call it giving you the tea. And that you got to think, you got you got to think about what you you got to think about what you're eating. You have to evaluate what you're eating, and you have to ask why you're eating it. That's the T. Think, evaluate, ask. And here's how and here's how you do that. The first thing you do is you say, "Am I hungry or am I something else? Is this really hunger? Right? Is it really hunger? Because a lot of times we don't know the difference. We just think because we have a twinge in our stomach that it's hunger." So if you're if you're sitting some if you're sitting someplace or you're doing something, you're at work or you're driving or you're out, and then all of a sudden you feel like you want to eat something, you have to evaluate, you have to think, evaluate what just happened. Did I just get an email that upset me? Did somebody just did somebody just cut in line that make me mad? Am I stressed in traffic? Did, did, some, did something just happen to change in my environment to put me in an emotional state that I don't recognize, that shifted my energy, right? So is this really, is this really hungry? Because if you ate just an hour ago, it might not be. It might be something that just flipped your switch, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So am I, am I hungry or am I something else? That's, but for everything you put in your mouth, everything, am I hungry or am I something else? You walk, you walk in a room, you see some cookies on, you see some cookies on the table. You, you just put your hand out, pick up the cookie and eat it because it's there. Not because you're hungry, right? That happens, it happens all the time. Yeah. I just yeah. did that today. <laughs> right, because it's there. Because it's there, yeah. yeah. I'm going to get it, right? It's, it's a, 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 little, a little bit of pleasure. I get it, it's giving me pleasure. I'm, I'm eating for pleasure. So am I hungry or, or am I something else? That's the first question. The second question is this. If this food will not give me the body I say that I want, why am I eating it? So we have to define what we want to look like. We have to define how we want to feel. We have to define how we want to wear. We have to have a vision of that. We have to keep that vision. That's why That's why brides can lose weight for a wedding because they know what that day is going to feel like. They know what that dress is going to feel like. We have to create our, create our own bride story and keep that ever present in our mind and we can be happy, right? Because that vision in the future makes us happy better, better than where we are, right? So that's the second question. Am I... If this food will not give me the body that I say that I want, why am I, why am I eating it? The first question is, am I hungry or am I something else? And then the third question is, why this food now? Ooh, why this food now? Why this particular food mm -hmm. now? What, mm -hmm. what is it about this food? What, what memory is attached to it? When was the first time I had it? That, why this food now? And if we ask ourselves those three questions, what it does, Larry, it makes us stop. It breaks the pattern. Yeah. It, it, gives, it gives us pause to think. And when we think and break the pattern and break the habit and interrupt it, that's when we can step in and make a change. Wow. This is good. This is so good. The book is titled Leaving Large. The Stories of a Food Addict by Michelle Pettis. Do me a favor, tell our listening audience how they can get their copy today. You can get your copy today. I'm so glad you asked me that question. <laughs> so I have, I have a website. Okay. You can order it. You can order directly from me from the website, leavinglarge.com. That's L-E-A-V-I-N-G, leavinglarge.com. Directly from the website. I'll sign it. I'll sign it, send it to you. I got it. I got a plenty of people in Houston that had that have my book. So, uh, so shout out and thank you to y'all. Also, you can get it on Amazon if you just want to order directly from Amazon. You can order from Amazon. You can order. You can order from Barnes and Noble or or any bookstore. You can go to if you have a like a local bookstore that that you work with that you like. You want to go pick it up. If they don't have it in stock, they can they can order it for you. Gotcha. In, in, no. in, in, in any number of ways. All right. Now, listen, we, I am actually a co-host for a radio show in Houston, Texas, but this broadcast will even go beyond that because we're going to be at gospelupdates.com. So people will be able to see it at Gospel Updates TV as well. 
So we're excited to uh, have you as our guest today, Michelle Pettis. Do me a favor, tell our listening audience, uh, are you on social media? How can they connect? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. I, you know, I, I am on, on social media and I, I'm so glad that you, that you mentioned gospel updates because there's, there's a story in the book that is one of my favorites. And it's actually one of the first ones I wrote and it's called The Pastor Needs a Plate. And it's about a congregation that uh, showed their pastor how much they loved and adored him by the amount of food they put on their plate. So I, 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 am, I unpack that a little bit. So that, that's, a, that's a really good story. But I am on social media. You can find me on social media at I am brand new now. Okay. And, and it's I am brand new now because this is, this is about creating some brand new thinking about the way we manage food. Even though the book is leaving large, the thinking, we have to develop brand new thinking and we have to develop it now. Not next week, not tomorrow, you know, not, not after the weekend, not at the, after the first of the month. Now, change, change starts now. I am brand new now. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook. And you can find me on Twitter, too. So tweet me out. I love it. Michelle Pettis, thank you so very much for being a guest on today's broadcast. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you so much. Bless you. Stay Stay tuned tuned for the Larry Larry W. W. Robinson Robinson Show. Show. Celebrated media personality Larry W. Robinson presents Gospel Updates. Gospel Updates is the who, what, when, why, and where in the gospel music industry. Gospel Updates is a monthly magazine, weekly newsletter, video webcast, as well as a podcast. Gospel Updates has over 25 years of featuring people in the gospel music community. Gospel Updates magazine and the new Gospel Updates weekly newsletter document those who are continuing to help shape and write new chapters of this ever-evolving story of gospel. Go to www.gospelupdates.com. That's www.gospelupdates.com to get the latest issues. If you want to be featured, call or text 337-214-4046 or email gospelupdates at gmail.com for rates and details. Gospel Updates, featuring people in the gospel community for over 25 years. You're listening to The Larry W. Robinson Show. Inspiration for your eternal name. Shalom. 